All right, Internet, this is elementary audio tutorial number three. Um, today we're going to look at sort of a procedural, generative, random pattern kind of thing, uh, which is a small variation really on the sampler tutorial from last time. So I think today will be a little bit quicker than a shorter video than the previous ones as well, because we kind of covered a lot there. Um, and now hopefully we can just take what we've learned to make some cool things pretty quickly. Um, as always, if you have not seen the introduction video, I'd recommend starting there because it'll explain a lot what's going on here. Um, and with that, let's get started. So here is, um, you know, another kind of hello world file, just like we started our last tutorials with. Um, I've got our require statements at the top. I've got a bunch of sample paths on my computer. Um, if you want to run this example on your own, obviously you should update those paths to stuff that you have. And then we've got the load event and we're just rendering a sample in both channels on the, on the render output. So in the MIDI sampler video, I described that this sample node is triggered by the rising edge of a control signal that goes from zero to one and, and then back down to zero. Um, and that's really convenient in the case of uh, you know a MIDI key press, right? Because the con the c constant value that's driving the sample, I can just kind of like keep an eye on that constant value. And when I see the MIDI key press, I can set its value to one. And when I see the key release, I can set its value to zero. And so, you know, there you have the control signal alternating from zero to one, and that's what's triggering the sample. So. We can remove a lot of that and just use el.train, which is itself a control signal running from zero to one. Um, it's a lot like a square tooth waveform. Uh, and it runs here at whatever frequency you set. So this is two hertz. So if, I, if we run this as is, we should just hear the kick drum, you know, constantly firing. Right. And then, of course, you know, you can set this to something crazy if you want. So starting here, we can build out, um, well, we can build out a pretty easy kind of sequencer sort of thing. So if I start with this, I'll duplicate this a few times. Maybe I'll go, um, maybe I'll do something like, Run the kick at one hertz, the hi hat at four, and the clap at two. Okay, simple, simple. Um, and so, taking this a little bit further, I want to introduce a new node that I haven't talked about yet, which is the sequence node. And the sequence node is pretty neat. I can write something that looks like this. and drive this by the same type of control signal. So the way a sequence node works is, um, similarly, we look for a rising edge of control signal, but when we see that rising edge, we output the next value in the sequence. So the first time here, we're gonna output a one, the next time we're gonna output a zero, a zero, then a one, and then a zero, and then repeat, and it'll loop by default. Um, and so we're taking this train signal and basically you know, letting some of them through but not letting other ones through. And so we can develop a pattern for the kick using this. So let me put this, I'll put the kick at four, the hi-hat at four, and train at two, and then the kick has this sequence pattern. So let's take a listen to that. Cool. Um, and so here is like, you know, this kind of sets up a structure for um, basically a little sequencer, right? So if I take this, copy this a few times, I'll have this one. Um, I'll put another one. And let me try to like visually align these. So 
So I'm going to bring this to a four-step pattern just for simplicity. Put the hat on everything. I'll put the clap off, except for the two or the three. <laughs> um, and then we'll just have that little perk hit. So let's see what this is like. Cool. Um, so this right here is kind of the structure that I really wanted to show in this video. Because here you can take this in, in all sorts of ways. Like, I can just add an extra value to the kick pattern, and then we have some kind of polyrhythm, polymeter, forget which is which. Um, and, you know, just instant, like, exploration. Um, let me take that back. And so the last thing I want to do in this video um, is talk about the way that elementary will quantize events. So let's start with something like this. I'm going to use nodes set interval to run this whole function every 500 milliseconds. And then what I'm going to do is every time we run this, I'm going to compute a new rate to run with. So randomly, I'm going to pick, we'll either run at 2 hertz or at 4 hertz. And I'll make a constant value node for that. And then in here, I'll just change all these. OK, so. Every 500 milliseconds, we're going to recompute this whole function. We're going to pick a random rate, 2 or 4 hertz. We're going to update our constant value node. And then the sequences here will be driven you know, faster or slower, depending. So let's see what that's like. something a little faster. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so I kind of want to, mostly I want to leave this kind of here as um, an example and kind of a prompt for uh, you know, for those of you who are interested to take this and run with it. And you can do the same thing, you know, instead of using the sample node, you can use, um, you could use a, a signal generator, right? Like a sine tone or a sawtooth or something um, and use the sequence to generate melodies, uh, harmonies, etc. cetera. Um, but the last thing that I want to say here is to describe basically how the timing works with something like set, set interval. So set interval runs on Node, Node.js's timers, right? And the Node.js timers are accurate, but they kind of run on their own schedule. And in parallel, we have the audio thread running, right? And so in audio, we're very careful about when we make our updates. We want things to be perfectly in sync with other things. And so when you call core.render, by default, elementary is going to try to make, you know, apply the change that you've given it as fast as possible. Um, but if we're not careful, that could be out of, you know, kind of out of time. It could be at the wrong time uh, that we really wanted it. And so there's a way that we can handle this basically by asking elementary to defer all updates to quantized intervals. And so I can do that just by running the same thing and passing this dash Q flag. So here I'm saying quantize all changes at the rate of um, you know, 500 milliseconds. And so we have that set interval timing timer in there running at 300 milliseconds. But if we make a change at 300 milliseconds, it's not going to take effect until 500 milliseconds. Cool. 
So, um, so that's neat. And, um, I think that's a really helpful thing for, uh, both for like, you know, making in time procedural pattern stuff, but also it's important if you want to, you know, change LFOs perfectly in tempo and stuff like that. Um, and so last thing here, we don't actually even have to use set interval in this case because elementary will fire an event exactly when it, um, you know, applies a change. So I can use core.on tick. And then I can take this away. And so here what happens is um, you know, we ask elementary to quantize at some interval. When that interval elapses, I mean, when that interval is, is up, um, we apply all queued changes and then we fire the tick event. And that's kind of elementary's way of saying like, okay, changes are in, it's time to prepare your next round of changes. And so we do this and we do it as fast as possible, but they're gonna wait and queue up until the next um, quantized boundary. So for example, we can run this here And then if, for example, we just want to run this at a, different, at a different interval, this is two seconds. So now we'll hear kind of the same pattern for two seconds before any changes are applied. And we'll probably wait two seconds to hear the first thing because I didn't, <laughs> because I didn't render until the tick event. Yeah, cool. All right, so that's it. Um, that is sequences, pattern generation, um, quantizing, and I actually find this stuff really fun. I mean, this is, I spend a lot of time myself just messing around with this because I think if you take this structure, you can go in so many different directions um, for pattern related things. And uh, it's pretty fun too to take like kind of, uh, have access to all of the NPM libraries for things like music theory. Um, so you can, you know, create sequences with musical notes and scales really easily just with an NPM install for some of the packages that are out there. Um, yeah. All right. That's all I wanted to say today. I ran a little bit longer than I wanted. Sorry. Um, but I think this is an exciting one. Uh, yeah. Take it and run with it. Um, I will, as usual, post a link to the Discord channel in the description for this video. And I will say as well that the public beta will be announced almost, I would say maybe two weeks from now is, is kind of when I'm aiming, um, assuming all goes well. So really coming up here uh, and I'm really excited to share it uh, and to get this thing moving. So that's what I got today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you for the next video.